beautiful souls. I hope you're doing well today. It's another CIT day, Creative Intuitive Transmissions, which are always, as I, it's important for me to repeat that the these transmissions and the art that comes out of these transmission is inspired by the Mela Collective, which is my soul cluster or soul group. So I do not make any channeling. Uh, this is only the connection through the heart to my higher self and to that beautiful group of uh, souls that I am part of. So I communicate through telepathy, through the heart, through a form of claircognizance that comes from my connection to them. So no channeling there. Uh, today is a joyful topic, and I think we all need a little bit of a joy these days. Um, for those who are following the Disclosure um, community, uh, galactic community, uh, we see a lot of, um, presently, a lot of this disinformation taking place, a lot of agents uh, that were placed there either by the, you know, letter edge letter agency or by uh you know the uh, the previous agendas of the grays which had for purpose to try to confuse people and uh get um uh, you know just yeah confused everyone and uh and also meddle uh with the um muddle i don't know what's the exact word in english the real information that's coming out there by serious contactees and serious disclosure speakers uh, such as Elena Dedan, Alex Collier, uh, Marcella Velasco, Tony Rodriguez, Jean-Charles Moyen, Melanie Charret, JP, uh, and many others, you know, I might forget and I'm sorry, uh, Dan Willis, you know, there's so many people who are bringing real information and there's out there a lot of disinformation agents who are trying to muddle the whole narrative and the whole um you know, information with uh, with lies, basically, and uh, I'm not going to get too much in details with that. But um, the reason why I am addressing this notion of uh, disinformation today in the CAT that's about joy, you're probably wondering what's the connection there, is that um, many of us are, are presently in a, in a place where we're wondering, you know, what, you know, Many of us kind of know and are able to discern the information and see, oh, this is complete BS and this is, seems to, to be real. But other people are like wondering, how, how can I know this? Like, how can I um, how can I discern what is BS and what is not? And there's different ways. Obviously, um, it's also by knowing a lot of the information that's out there. Uh, going into your heart, going into your soul um, by connecting with yourself and you will know instantly if the frequency from the person doesn't resonate with you. But one tip I wanted to talk about today, and it's actually the topic of the CIT, is um, the question of humility and humor, because those are two important um, elements that really I find have been a great help for me to discern um, the information, but also the personality of certain speakers out there. Uh, but obviously, this question of um, humor and humility as um, tools of discernment uh, goes much beyond the whole, you know, galactic or disclosure information or um, you know elements. It's really something. It's a tool that we can all use in our lives, not only to discern, you know, other people's attitudes and posture, but definitely to um, bring into our own life a posture that is much more uh, light and positive and that is less imbued with the spiritual the spiritual ego that sometimes uh, gets in the way uh, in you know as we grow and we evolve in our journey. So really the subject today is really about this humor as a posture of humility and a tool of discernment. Um, and the what I've noticed, and I don't know if some of you have noticed that as well, that the people who seem to be disinformation agent or people who claim to be, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, some guru type of person or whatever, there are two elements that will always show up in their personality. The first one is a complete lack of humor, uh, incapacity to a little bit of healthy self derision, which is really part of you know what. Um, you know, what is really healthy, because it proves when you have a little bit of healthy self-derision, it's not about putting yourself down. It's just about um, 
being able to be conscious enough about who you are in terms of positive, but also negative elements that you're able to laugh at yourself, that you're able to uh, have a little bit of humors toward yourself. And this is something I really admire in uh, people like Danny Anderson, Alex Collier, Elena Danan, they're, you know, they bring serious information and sometimes they're very serious about it, but they, they have this way of, of having, adding this element of, of, of fun, but mostly of, of, of laughter and of humor, uh, sometimes a little bit sarcastic, which I love. I find sarcastic humor delicious that is brought there in order to, um, you know, just to, to remind people that, you know, they, they're not gods. They, they shouldn't be put on pedestals or anything like that. They're just normal people trying to bring some information. So, you know, in a way, I find that humor is really um, this hint that a person is not taking him or herself too seriously. Um, and this is what I've noticed in those dis disinformation um, agents, uh, may be from the gray agenda or from CIA, whatever. These people will always have an attitude of like, I am the high commander of Lyra, or I am the queen or king of whatever, or um, I am, you know, it's always like a big I am with a big I and a big A, like, you know. So, you know, obviously the humility there is completely absent. So that's definitely a sign you should be kind of worried about, worried about. And like I said, secondly, the problem is that often you'll see these people are completely lacking humor about themselves and which goes with the lack of humility. Uh, and so for me, it's always a sign that, you know, okay, I, you know, just, just your attitude just puts me off. So, I mean, I'll look at your information and usually it will, you know, it will confirm that, you know, through my discernment, this doesn't correspond to either reality or it's just you're just trying to put yourself on a pedestal or something like that. So um, this is, you know, this is something I wanted to give a, as a little bit of a tip uh, regarding our community and this information going on right now. But it goes much more beyond that because it's really about ourselves as well. You know, when we are in a posture of taking ourselves too seriously, there's little problems that happen. The first one is, we get caught up in drama in our lives because, you know, things are not easy these days and things are challenging. And so we end up easily getting into that victim posture and mode where, oh, I am going through this and I'm, oh, this is so rough. And, and then the lack of humor prevents you from being able to take a step back and just look at your situation and see, like, am I really a victim here? Like, am I really, you know, is there a way in which I could change my posture or, or, paradigm or um, perception of this situation. So it gives you a healthy step back. Uh, secondly, humor is a beautiful way to not take yourself seriously again. So, uh, you know, if, if, if at some point, you know, you're, I don't know, you know, sometimes there's a, a, a very subtle nuance, but that's important to put here or to explain here is that, you know, sometimes you do a lot of journey, you do a lot of work and you're proud of yourself. You're like, wow, you know, I transmuted this really big thing and wow, I'm proud of myself. So that's really good. You know, being proud of oneself is, is good. It's healthy. It, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, having self humor is not about putting ourselves down again. Um, but then there's also a moment when it can, you know, go into the other extreme where, being proud of yourself is wonderful. It's perfect if you've done some wonderful work and you're you're really proud of yourself. But then there comes a moment when you think you've seen it all and you've, you know, you're good. Oh, I'm so good. Like you almost adopt that kind of guru-like posture, you know, which, you know, I'm a teacher, you know, what? No, you know, um, we're all in journey. We're all evolving. We're all in the journey of transmutation, of healing. Some days we're doing a great job and we're super proud of ourselves. The next day we might tumble again and just completely make fools of ourselves. And that's okay. You know, that's part of the journey. And having humor about that is so freaking crucial. And not to be caught up in the posture of like the guru or the teacher or thinking, oh, because I've accomplished this and that as a starseed or as a, I don't know, as a spiritual person, then I'm, you know, I've seen the light and touched the monolith and, you know, whatever. So, you know, again, really important humor and humility are, are postures in which you're able to keep 
a kind of a healthy, safe distance from like your ego. And you just like look at yourself with your be beautiful things, but also with your, you know, with your flaws, with your problems, with, you know, all of these things that we all have, you know? So um, I think it's, it's really something that we, um, I don't know, like personally, like presently in the situation that we are in, in our galactic community and disclosure community, I see a lot of these egos, you know, trying to push themselves up with, you know, the disinformation agents and stuff. And uh, right away, my first like instinct is to say, oh, let's put some humor in this, you know? And so even for myself, like, for example, um, you know, I might accomplish a certain task that I'm really proud of and something I've done that was great. And I'm, but that doesn't mean I'm better than others or whatever, or that I think that I'm, you know, whatever. So I always like to bring a little bit of humor in my, either in my posts or comments, or I'm going to use a, a photo avatar that's a little bit funny of myself, or I'm going to be doing some stupid faces or some, things like that, just to remind myself and others that, you know, I'm just on the journey like everyone else. And I'm trying to kind of laugh uh, healthily at, at myself, at the things that, you know, if, if I take myself too seriously, or if I take things too seriously around me, then that's a way to, to bring a little bit of that, um, let's say the child, happy child uh, vibe that's uh, very uh, important in our lives. And that's something I wanted to also bring regarding the Mela Collective. The Mela Collective uh, in the different um, uh, inner guidance transmissions that they have shared through me or with me or that I've shared with them, let's say, uh, throughout the last two or three years that I've been sharing um, transmissions from the Mela Collective is that, is that um, very often they're going to use like either puns or they're going to be laughing or they're going to bring humor into um, the into the, the exchange or the transmission. And that's also something I really feel from them. Like when I just go in my heart and and feel like just be with them what i feel is a lot of joy and humor and um and it's for me it's like a sign of high vibe so people who are able to be in humor and humility are, for me it's always a sign that they're they're in a high vibe mode and so i know the melee collective is a high vibe um kind of collective and it's there's nothing it's not an ego thing it's just like they're just high vibe energy and high frequency and they're very joyful but in that way they're very kind of childlike in the sense that they have this child innocence at the same time great, great wisdom but um, they bring this element of the happy, leaping, joyful child, and they often bring that element into the conversations we have in the CITs, where they always bring back the the conversation or the transmission to the to the child, to the energy of the child, which is often pure and innocent and joyful and not caught up in its ego. Uh, it's really just how it is, you know. And they always bring that element back. And so this notion of humility and, and humor is, is a posture that is really intrinsically related to the posture of going back or being connected to our inner child. So that's what we were invited uh, here is again is to connect to this joyful inner child and when we are in this posture of joy and 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 laughter um and you know humor can have different facets i mean you can have like real humor um that's just just happy joy you can have more sarcastic humor which like i said i find delicious but there's risks as well because if humor like sarcastic humor is used in a way to kind of transmit passive aggressive emotions then that's not humor anymore. That's just like passive aggressive behavior, um, you know, kind of masked under humor. So it's very important to be conscious uh, and as always to be in this presence, in this kind of mindfulness of what state we are in, what posture where we are in. And if our humor really comes from a place of joy and a place of stepping back from the drama and the ego, or if it's just a way to like, you know, say things on the kind of supposedly funny way, but it, instead it's just like criticism and judgment. So again, you know, humor, there's different kinds of humors. And again, I'm not saying sarcastic humor is always um, passive aggressive, far from it, uh, but sometimes it can be. So it's just, always, it's more about 
um, presence and and mindfulness about this the not the agenda but the posture in which we are when we uh, share humor uh, in our lives. So pretty basic message, you know, going back to humor, going back to a posture of humility, again, not putting ourselves down, but just not thinking that we're like the end of the world and we're like, so it, and, you know, because that's a sign that, you know, you definitely have um, issues with self-confidence because, you know, if you're really self-confident, you can just laugh about yourself and make funny faces and being stupid and, 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 and joke around and, you know, you don't have anything to defend in terms of ego. So, you know, it's, it's usually a sign. So um, the today's message is relatively simple uh, and easy to, you know, to relate to. So I'm going to go um, into the kind of iconographical aspects of this message of today, because in the iconography I share, it may be the background behind or the collage that I make to complement the message. There's also always little elements here and there that kind of bring another facet to the message by the Mela, because you know the backgrounds and the collages are obviously influenced and uh, inspired by the Mela Collective. So their message is also imbued in the visuals. So today we have in the background here some lovely background of what seems to be kind of fairies or, you know, beings of the um, inner earth or maybe joyful kind of she or Telosi or I don't know what they are. Tuatatadanan, are they fairies? Are they elves? Doesn't matter. But what they really represent to me is this kind of joyful dancing beings that are high vibrations because you know high vibration beings are happy and joyful and laughing uh and you know um uh, by the way i just want to add something i forgot um when elena denan at the beginning of her um when she started um to share the messages of her contacts upstairs um it was really really interesting because um people like um, Seladion or uh, Myra, for example, and a few others, but those were the main ones, were, you know, they're high vibration beings. They're like 5D beings, you know? And um, it was amazing to see how funny these guys were. They were laughing all the time. They were making jokes. They were uh, kind of um, doing like buddy, buddy jokes to each other as, as co-workers with Thorhan. And, you know, so... What I'm trying to say here is that beings of, of higher frequencies, they're not going to say like, I am the commander of, you know, no, they're, they're just, they're laughing. They're, they're, they're just having fun. They're, they're like on a high vibe and that's always a good sign, you know? So I just wanted to bring that out again, that beings of higher frequencies, you're going to recognize them by the amount of humor that they're, they're going to have and kind of humility, you know? And that's also something for people who are, you know, there's people out there who are doing channeling, which again is something I really, really, you know, and I'm not the only one to say that, obviously. Lena Danan says it, and many other people says it. Really important to stay away from channeling because you don't know what the hell you're channeling. But, you know, that's also a sign that if you get like some sort of contact by a being, you know, ask yourself, is this being in humility and humor? Because that's another sign, you know, there's other elements that you would need to address to make sure to, if, this person really is what this person pretends to be or claims to be. But the vibe, the frequency, the humor, the humility is something that's not going to lie. And that's something I've always felt with the Mela Collective is that there is always that joy, that laughter, that kind of childlike innocence that I know for me, Claire cognizantly, that it's high vibe, you know? So I'm coming back to the high vibe beings. This is the ones dancing behind us here. They're kind of joyfully uh, dancing. They're joyfully expressing their high frequencies through um, a little bit of the leaping of the the child. And they're, ju- they're just very content. And um, this is something that we are invited to do as well in our lives. It's not just about being funny and putting funny faces because joy can be expressed in many, many different ways uh, in your words, in your laughter, in your physical posture. When you're like, you know, you're feeling good, you're feeling, you know, in a, in a, in a posture of, of high vibes, 
But, you know, there's also activities and elements you can do to bring that joy back into your life. It may be dancing. It can be certain music because music is frequency and frequency can, if you have high frequency music, it brings that joy back, that humor back into your life. So dancing, music, there's all kinds of activities that you can do. Play, play with a child, play with an animal, uh, watch, you know, animal videos watch funny cats video i don't care whatever it is that makes it for you that brings you out of that victim mode that drama mode that i'm the best person in the universe mode you know all these things and it's just it just brings you back this kind of inner wisdom of like i don't care you know i'm just i'm just smiling i'm just smiling at this whole circus at these clowns and again it's not a judgment but it's just about like when you see people who are like just taking themselves too seriously, when you take that step back, you see kind of the clownish aspect of all it and of it all and how ridiculous the whole thing is, you know? So, so our background here obviously is inviting us to more joy and humor and dance and music and be in that space of extreme, um, high vibes. Then we're going to have a look at our, um, beautiful collage. So our collage today, I'm going to put it, move a little bit so you can see it better. Uh, our collage today is entitled Tintael, Tintael. And it's interesting because, as you know, the titles of my uh, collages, I don't know what they mean. It's just words that come to me when I'm doing the collage. The word comes to me. So I don't know if it's in a particular language, maybe Earth, Earth or galactic language is it just frequency of the sound i have no idea and it doesn't matter really because it just you know it it accompanies the 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 creation and that's the only thing that matters so tintail for me it has this very kind of i don't know it reminds me a little bit of a of a um how do you call that a bell you know i don't know it's um i don't know there's something kind of light and joyful because lightness is also something that's really part of the words of today. Uh, you know, there's humility, there's humor, there's laughter, there's high vibes, but there's lightness as well, because uh, it's really tough these days to be in light energies because everything is trying to bring us down. So it's our responsibility to be in this joy and in this lightness. And as I'm there, before I get into the, um, the collage, the ladies dancing behind me remind me of she, you know, like the kind of elves or whatever, how you would call them, spirits of the forest. And um, it's I've sh shared on my channel the first of uh, this year, the first of January of 2024, um, a, a quote from a book by David Spangler, who was um, sharing his conversations with the she, which are, again, you know, kind of... Um, inner earth kind of beings um and they're eight of they are of great wisdom and uh, mariel i think is her name i'm not 100 percent sure that's mariel or mariel anyway that's his contact and this beautiful lady was um sharing about the importance of joy as a as a posture as a state of being as a choice in your actions it's not just an emotion it's really something that you incarnate you choose and you make the conscious decision of incarnate and it's the same thing with humility and humor in that posture of of not taking yourself too seriously it's really about deciding this you know you, it's not you're not just laughing because you're just laughing it's because you are putting yourself in the place where you choose not to be in drama where you choose not to take yourself too seriously where you choose not to you know yeah roll yourself in drama and, and, and victim and victimization so joy is really a choice it's a state of being it's it's a modus vivendi it's it's a, it's a mindful choice so just wanted to bring that back and i'll put the link under the video today uh, in the description of this video. So this way you can go back to the beautiful wisdom of this uh, this beautiful Meriel lady who was uh, talking about joy and how the, the she people actually um, incarnate joy in so many ways in their lives and invite us humans on Terra on the surface to do as well. So today's collage. So um, Tintael is um, a collage that has a beautiful red, pink, kind of background, very busy, very happy, uh, lots of birds in flight with spring-like beautiful cherry or plum, I don't know, uh, flower, um, 
you know, just very joyful kind of background uh, that reminds me of a of a child just or a bunch of children playing together and just you know running after each other and laughing and and you know th- this is for me this paper really represents this kind of joyful element, this kind of um, yeah non ego non you know non drama non victimization type of energy. Uh, then we have a central circle, which is golden in uh, in color, which, uh, as always, for me, rep- the gold represents the connection to source and to the fractals of source that we all are, each of us. And so it connects us with this beautiful high frequency element of source. And what we have in this uh, beautiful round central uh, golden circle is, again, lots of f- uh, birds in flight. So, again, a lot of freedom coming out of stepping back of back of the drama or taking oneself too seriously and just, you know, open your wings and take your flight into that joy, into that joyfulness, into that, um, yeah, this element of of letting go of any kind of drama. The lower um, circle, which is black uh, with golden waves and kind of blue sea foam, really represents the kind of chaotic or more challenging elements of life where we're kind of pushed by life to, you know, it's easy to get, especially these days, <laughs> um, caught up in the drama, caught up in a posture of victimization or uh, or or be, I don't know, um, pulled by a lot of chaotic information, disinformation that comes from agents who are just trying to confuse us completely. And so we are invited, you know, to just transmute this by again taking that posture of mindful presence where you can look at things with a little bit of humor a little bit of humility and you're like "Mm, I don't know I don't know if I believe this I don't know if I want to get into that drama I don't you know I don't want to take myself too seriously I don't want to take others too seriously so it's just kind of a reminder of like what's around but that doesn't mean you have to get caught up in it and what creates that discernment uh, is that a circle, a red circle that connects the larger golden circle with a black one, which is a red circle, which for me always represents the connection to the heart, which I'm wearing today. My beautiful heart pendant that was offered to me by my beautiful friend uh, and is a beautiful um, uh, labradorite a stone, which I love very much. And for me, the labradorite really uh, corresponds to the magic, but obviously not dark magic or anything like that, but the joyful magic, the beautiful white magic, light magic of being connected to our heart and to the joy that's within us. That's why I'm wearing my beautiful (laughs) pendant today. So again, the connection to the heart is really crucial because this is the place where you're going to be able to discern what's negative energy, what's victimhood, what's misinformation, what is ego. And you're going to be able not to be in your mind, but in your heart connected to your soul. And and then from that place of mindfulness, you know who you are and you don't, you know, you you just, you're proud of yourself, but you don't need to take yourself too seriously, or you, you don't have to, you know, try to, put people other people down or put yourself up or whatever because you're just feeling good you know basically um and then in the central large circle we have a little black um uh circle with golden writings which is japanese script and for me it's interesting because it really represents how when I use the this, this kind of script, for me, it's really, again, about this notion of magic, but ma- again, not like black magic or anything like that, but magic in the sense that our words are spells. And so if, if we chose our words to be negative, we choose for our words to be negative, then obviously we're going to spell negative things around. But if we choose to use golden words, which is, you know, Uh, what's being represented here golden words so actually bathe into the energy of creation of source of the fractal of source that we are that's connected to our soul then those beautiful golden worlds words will spell positive things around so when i say spell i mean like um positive things that you will say that you will utter or positive things that you will write or positive things that you will think or um, you will bring into joy and, you know, humility and all these elements. So um, with your attitude, maybe with the words you use or with just the posture that you're in, you can bring gold, golden element, high frequency into 
this kind of challenging times and situations you might be in. And from these golden words, um, you have the opening of uh, the beautiful blossoming, if you want, of source energy, which is those two beautiful branches um, that open like that. And also remind me a little bit of a smile, if you want, <laughs> uh, because, you know, this topic of humor and laughter. Um, so these two branches made of gold with uh, the flower of life motif, obviously, as always, for me, represents the energy of source and the fractal of source that we all are, and that we are able to incarnate when we are in this place of the happy leaping child, of the joy, of the humor, of the humility where we just are feeling good, you know, and nothing to prove. We're just feeling good. So this is more of a pure gold, you know, it's unencumbered by anything. While the central gold with the birds and fly represent a little bit more like the energy of source, but grounded into terra. You know, that's why we have fruits and trees and birds in flight, because it's the energy of source, but how we ground it on terra in our attitudes, in our everyday actions, in our everyday words, how we utter words, how we act towards people, towards ourselves, towards the information that we see around us. So this is uh, for Tintael. So Tintael, uh, the original as well as a digital file are both available on my online boutique at abigailrichard.com. As always, the original as well as the digital file are imbued with the beautiful energy of Mela Collective through their message and but also through the colors and shapes that are uh, chosen in the background as well. And uh, I hope that today's message have brought to you, um, yeah, just reconnected you to this part of yourself that already is, because we all have everything in us already. You know, we have to, that's a little element I wanted to bring as well, is that often in the new age slash spiritual kind of BS that's been fed to us programming for many years, is that there's always that notion, I have to work on myself, I have to work on myself, I have to work on myself. You already have everything within you because you are a fractal of source. We all are a fractal of source. So we are already perfect in a way, in a way. That's not just to put ourselves like, oh, I'm better, but we're all, potentially, we're all perfect. What's happening is that what we have is just obstacles and veils that have been put, you know, through programming, through trauma, through bad experiences, through ego, whatever, through the mind, a lot of stuff were like, was kind of put to kind of hide that amazing, beautiful person beings that we are. And we have to stop thinking that, you know, we need to work on this or work on that. It's a word that we often use and I've used it myself sometimes. It's just out of habit, but really it's not a correct word because we don't need to work. What we need is to let go of the obstacles that are between us and the magnificence of our golden, you know, fractal of source that we are. And um, humor and humility is an amazing, beautiful way to connect with that inner child, which is the closest to that beautiful source energy that we are. So it's not so much about working this and working that and you know, getting rid of this, getting rid of that. It's more about how can I just be in a posture and a position of laughter, of joy, of high frequency, of humor and humility, where I don't need to prove anything to anyone anymore and where I can just be myself and then so many obstacles are just going to naturally drift away and you're going to get closer and closer to, to your amazing, beautiful, magnificent nature of Fractal of Source. So just wanted to bring that complementary aspect to the conversation. So I wish you a lovely day. Uh, lots of laughs, lots of laughter, lots of high vibes, lots of humor. Take everything that's happening in our um, in our galactic community or in our um disclosure community with a grain of salt with some humor and use that as a beautiful tool of discernment to see what resonates with your heart or not take great care of yourself much love bye mm -hmm.